This video is another exploration from strategies for deploying virtual representations of the built environment. Simulation tools evolve. This opened up opportunities to upgrade or repurpose legacy models. This video focuses on an ESPR exemplar model derived from work in an IE Annex more than a decade ago. This is a Blender representation of the model. It was designed to support assessments of overall impact for retrofit strategies such as upgrading glazing and facade properties, reducing infiltration, adding shading, fins, and the like. Let's have a look at that model. There are several configuration files in the folder, but we're going to look at the temperature setback variant. There are quite a few zones in the model. Here's the ground level, two open plan offices, an entrance, a common corridor inside. Here's the first level, again with two open plan office spaces and a central core. The second level has zones facing each orientation which represent multiple cellular offices with the mass explicit and level three, again, goes back to two open plan offices with a core. The model does include explicit representations of ceilings and roofs. So the potential would be to treat the drop ceilings as return plenums, for example. We go into the zones. For example, here we have the ground level office on the east side. Um, it's quite an abstract representation with, with the glazing lumped in each facade, separate frame, shading fins on the south and east, there's no internal clutter within the space. We didn't even bother with the doors to the common areas. If I look at the cellular offices on the south face, we have the appearance of multiple cellular offices. In this case, the resolution the model would treat them as one thermal zone with similar conditions in each. This is sufficient to pick up the orientational driving forces of the model, but not differences between the various zones. The model includes two zones representing mixing boxes for supply and return to temper fresh air into the building. However, this is represented by attributes within the zone operations files and fixed rates of ventilation between um, these mixing boxes and the occupied spaces. This is a relatively old representation of mechanical ventilation systems, we could potentially do quite a bit better than that. This model was reasonable for its epoch, but its form and fabric and calculation approaches are lower resolution than models implemented using today's tools. If we wanted to upgrade or repurpose this legacy model, what are our choices? 
certainly facilities describing airflow within buildings and through the facade have evolved over the decades since this model was created. The simulation method is the same, but the interface and our ability to describe these things has evolved. Flow networks with scores of nodes and components can now be implemented. There are videos on the site that discuss the design and creation of flow networks. To move from imposed infiltration, we would, of course, need to add surface attributes identifying the locations of facade faults. To track flow between rooms and with the ceiling voids, we would need to add doors and air transfer grills. To move from legacy ventilation directives, we would need to add air transfer grills and fans into the ceilings and the mixing box zones. Would we zone the building differently? If our purpose was still to do retrofit assessments, the current zoning strategy probably needs only minor tweaking. However, however if we want to include local thermal comfort, glare, or indoor air quality, an increase in resolution should be considered. Certainly, we might want to consider making each cellular office a zone, for example. However, altering the zoning of an existing model can be tedious. For some models, it might actually be easier to start from scratch. We mentioned that the spaces are free of thermophysical clutter. Do we need to fully populate the offices with furniture and fittings? Of course, if we had plans showing the position of desks and chairs and office equipment, this might be and might be relatively straightforward. For this video, let's focus on airflow issues. Let's make the adaptations so that infiltration can be calculated, switch to a more explicit representation of mechanical ventilation systems, include airflow between rooms by way of doors, and treat the ceiling voids as return plenums. Let's go and look at a model that has partially been updated um, to reflect some of these adaptations. Upgrading a model might involve geometry, might involve constructions, might involve any number of things, but there are databases involved with ESPR models. If I do a comparison between the legacy model and partly updated model. If we look in the databases folders, on the left is the legacy model, and on the right is, the, is a revised model. The database on the left for constructions only included the constructions directly used in this particular model. However, newer construction databases not only include things like categories, for example, walls, partitions, doors, framing, glazing, and of course, project specific ones. In this particular, we took the standard construction um, from the current distribution at VSBR and added to it the project specific entities from the left. What does that look like? Let's go back into the legacy model and into databases. And we'll see that there are there's only one category and these are the project specific constructions. If we open up the revised model. Its databases are using the, for example, the standard material database, and in this case, the constructions. And now 
have not only the standards, but again, here's our project specific constructions. What other changes have we made? For one thing, we've taken the two mixing boxes and moved them actually into the roof space. We have added in individual surfaces to represent the inlets from other spaces so that we can check that there is a one-to-one -one match. In the office spaces, we can see that some surfaces have been attributed with cracks. We we'll also added in doors to the passageway and set attributes for them. For example, here's that door. So we've made it out of a new construction and we've attributed the door to say that the door is ajar and it allows, it should allow bi-directional flow. Of course the revised interface now also shows us what's on the other side. If we look at the example of this extract grill, so there's a surface made out of steel which is has a use type of grill and it's open. Now the environment on the other side is unknown because we have not yet matched a surface in the ceiling void for this. If I look at the grill, it's also made of steel and it has a subtype for flow of inlet which says when it goes to make a flow network later on it's going to ask me how much air flows from the fan and we'll see similar to have changes have been made in several other zones ah but the west office on the third level is incomplete at this point we only have the door on one side. So let's make sure that we can see. Yes, so partition core A should have a door. Let's create one. So to do that, I go to surface list and edges. And I say I want to insert into a surface which one? Partition core A. And I want to do it at the base of the surface as in a door. So I've highlighted that and to match the other doors that have been put in, I'll set an offset, make it slightly wider, and there's the preview. I will accept that, give it a name, let's make it out of a solid wood, and the type is door, and here are my choices for flow attributes, closed, undercut, open, bi-directional, bi-directional ajar, or I haven't made up my mind yet. Uh, let's set this to undercut. I now have that door. Let's go back to see the other attributes of partition A. It faces another zone, which is core top. So, to complete the process, let's save this. Ah, it's noticed that I've added 
something to it, which has new attributes, and it's wanting to rebuild some of the files. So I'll say yes. Please recalculate shading because that is needs doing. And that goes off and does that in the background. Update the files. Yes. Let's use the current format rather than the legacy format that was used before. The new format also uh, includes optical data. So let's go to the core top. And there's partition core C, which needs to have a door at it. Now, we can simply copy the door from the other office that we just created. So what I want to do is copy a surface from another zone, use fine tolerances, and I will go to Office West 3 and find the door that I just created. Which one? It's a little difficult to see. However, I can see that the W3 door B, which I just created, has an unknown boundary condition. So that's the one that's been partially set up, and that's the one I want to copy. I want to invert it, the polygon, when copying it into this room. And then it asks me, do I want to make a thermal physical connection between this and that other zone? surface and I say yes. So I, uh, there is a report of problem edges and basically I need to go to the partition core C and it goes for takes 130, 29 and I need at this point to add in vertex 31 and 32. Now, if I go to Surface Attributes, I can see that the door B has been added and the fact that it's undercut has been noticed and this other surface are linked together. So that's the process of adding a door in one zone copying it into the adjacent space and checking that the attributes have been updated. And so this process would be carried out for the other grills and doors that need to be updated over time.